I have the very great privilege to introduce you to the man who opened my eyes about the cause of disease and also the possible cure of common diseases that affect people in our country. This was back in 1971 that I met Dr. Dennis Burkett. Dr. Burkett, welcome to the show. Can you tell me when and what kind of training that you received? Trinity College Dublin between 19... 30 and 35. I went up to the medical school. I went up to the university in Dublin in 1929. Decided I'd do anything in the world except be a doctor or a dentist. And I, I, I entered the engineering school and I did engineering for a year. And it was during my first year I felt very definitely called to give it up and take up medicine. And I have never ever for one moment regretted that decision. I was a surgeon fundamentally for all my professional life. But over the last 20 years, just over, I, got, I switched entirely from trying to cure disease to go 100% into trying to prevent disease. Because it wasn't until I came back from 20 years surgical practice in Africa that I was helped largely by others to appreciate that most of the common chronic diseases filling the hospital beds in Western countries today are rare or unknown in the third world were there even in North America before the First World War, are equally common in black and white Americans, and therefore they have to be due to our lifestyle, the way we live, and in which case they've got to be preventable if we can identify the factors in our lifestyle. All right, now you discovered the relationship between diet and disease from your experience in Africa and looking around the world. Now what exactly is the part of the diet that you identified as the cause? To begin with, we talked about fiber, but then we realized we were far too blinkered. If you look at the, the diet of disease of the countries throughout the world who don't get the common diseases of Western culture, and when I say the common diseases, I mean diseases like atherosclerosis, diabetes, gallstones, bowel cancer, breast cancer, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, navicular disease, huge pile of stuff. The countries who don't get these diseases have a diet with far more starch, far more fiber, far less fat, far less sugar, far less salt. And the two major things we need is to eat more fiber and less fat. All right, now if you were going to advise people on the diet to eat, what kind of meal plan would you tell them to eat? The two most important ones would be to eat far more fiber. The average American eats 15 grams a day. Our ancestors used to eat over 100. In much of the third world, they eat over 100. The first thing would be to eat more fiber. The second thing would be to eat far more starch. Now, people are afraid of starch. They think starch is fattening. It's never fattening. More bread, more potatoes, more pasta. Uh, all those starchy foods, and, and more fiber and more starch. Then, far less fat. I think that might almost come top of the list. We eat 45% of our total energy as fat, and it's nearly all saturated animal fat. Um, if we could cut down our fat by going, say, shall we say, on the sem semi-skimmed milk, um, a vegetable um, margarines rather than butter, and abolish fried food as far as possible, and something which we've only recently recognized is that meat grown on the farm in our country or yours has seven times as much fat on the carcass as wild meat and five times as much of that fat is the more dangerous saturated fat. Okay, in terms of practical everyday foods, can you give us some foods that you'd like to see people eat more of? I think we ought to eat far more foods made of cereals in general, particularly bread. Our ancestors ate between a pound, about a pound and a quarter per head per day of bread, always brown flour. We in Europe, in England, eat under a quarter of a pound a day. I think bread is a, a brown bread, not white bread. Brown or wholemeal bread is a very healthy diet. I like to see. Now, peas and beans are extraordinarily good because they're high in soluble fiber which is good from the point of view of diabetes and coronary heart disease. I think potatoes are very good. They're high in potassium. And Western man is the only mammal alive who eats more uh, sodium than potassium. I think potatoes, as long as they are neither cooked or eaten with fat, are a slimming diet 
uh, very nutritious. They tell me that there's almost no other diet which can't, contains almost everything a human being uh, needs. I, I, I mean, vegetables and fruits are all good, but most fruits, of course, is 98% water, so you don't get a lot of a lot of um, uh, fiber in it. Um, but if, also, uh, cereal is a good source of protein. I'm not a dietitian. I'm just, I mean, I'm a surgeon who's coming by the back door, but <laughs> this is just what I think about it.